computer set up in my bedroom. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is mount these speakers and I'm going to put a wall anchor in and then drill a hole to run my cable through. I'm going to try and keep most of these cables hidden behind the wall for this setup just because it's my room and I want to keep it as clean as possible. So now I'm going to tie a bolt to a string, tuck it back through the wall and let it fall to the ground and then use a wire feed to pull the, cable, the string through. And once I've gotten the string out, I'm going to tie it to some speaker wire and then pull it back up to the wall as shown. And now I'm going to strip the ends off the wire and put it up through the wall. And then hang it on the speaker. And then now I'm going to cut a hole by where my TV is going to be to pull all the cables through, like the HDMI cables, all the speaker wires and the power cables, the Ethernet. So it does need to be a bigger hole. I'm going to pull a plug out and you could save that little piece of drywall because you could use it to put the hole, plug the hole back up later on and clean it up once you're either moving out or decide you want to change it up. So now I'm going to feed the cables through using the wire feed. You can get these at Home Depot. They're relatively inexpensive. And they're very useful for this sort of thing. Unfortunately, this TV is being mounted on an exterior wall, so I have to deal with all the insulation in the wall. And then for the TV mount, I'm not going to show everything I installed that because they're all different and they all come with pretty good instructions. Uh, this is just an inexpensive one I got on Amazon for like 20 bucks. And so I'm also going to put labels on all of my cables to make it easier to figure out which one is which one I actually need to put the speakers in. And then here you can see for getting the bigger cable through, I just tied some string to the little eye hole that's in my feed and pulled it through. For my speakers, the ones that I'm using aren't typically used for wall mounting, so I've got to pull the base off first. And then now I'm going to put a wall mounting bracket on. Uh, this bracket I'm getting is usually used for hanging large mirrors or large paintings, but if you can cut them into size, they work very well for this sort of thing because of how easily they come on and off. I'm using some Tessa tape, which is used, which is anti-vibration to sort of help so nothing rattles when I actually hang it up on the wall. And I know where the strongest point of my speakers are, so I'm going to drill through there. These screws are a little bit overkill, but they're just ones that I had on hand at the time. And then you can see I have the other side of the bracket on the wall, and it just sort of hangs on there. Now I'm going to hook up my cables and hang them all up. And here's both speakers mounted. They hung pretty nicely. Remember to measure everything three to four times before you put it on, because this is permanent. It's going to leave large holes in the wall. Now I'm going to put the other side of my bracket for my wall mount on here and get that ready to hang up. There, I have a full review of the TV on another part of my channel. I'll leave that link below. Always remember, don't waterboard your television. And then now I've got it mounted on the wall. This is definitely a two-person job. I should not have done this alone, but, you know, whatever. Don't do as I do, do as I say. Now I'm going to run all my cables behind the TV and all around the mount without ruining the mount or making it so the TV might fall off. And then get it tilted to the proper spot where I want it and tighten everything down. I can't stress enough how much better this TV looks in person than it does in the video, but that's just how it's going to be because obviously you can't capture through the camera. All right, so now that I've got my TV mounted, I'm going to go and mount the center channel speaker. So for this, there's unfortunately no studs where I'm at, so I have to use these special wall hangers. I'll also leave these a link to these below. I got them on Amazon. They supposedly can hold a couple hundred pounds, but they did a pretty good job of mounting my center channel, which I wanted to wait to mount until I got it up the TV on the wall so I can get it as close as possible, as you can see here. So here's everything installed, and now i got to go and clean everything up down on the base. You can see the cables are all still a mess, and I've got to clean up my little uh, media center. One thing I wanted to talk about that I didn't put in my actual review of the TV is how awesome the remote is. It's called the Magic Remote, and you could use it. It automatically knows other devices, and you could use it for things like Xboxes and other uh, receivers that you wouldn't usually be able to use it for. And for my Ethernet cable, my other speaker cable, I'm actually running it through an existing hole in the wall where the... Uh, coax comes out for internet in my apartment and now I'm going to put up some blackout curtains to try to keep as much light out as I can so you can get as much of that HDR effect as possible that you can get with fantastic looking OLED panels. 
So obviously, whatever curtains you get, doesn't matter as long as they're black out to go with the rest of your room, just to keep it as dark as possible. And I'll leave a link to everything that I use in this video between the 9.2 receiver, the TV, the speakers, and link below. A lot of the stuff I already had when I got it, and I just sort of put together all the components that I had. And as you can see, it's a lot darker in here now. I'm also going to hook up hue lights just for more of a better experience for everything. And I'm going to get the base, change out all my bulbs that I have so I could just have one button turn off all the lights in the room and dim them accordingly. Then I also have a motorized bed frame to motorize it up so you could use it like a couch. And I found this basket at, I think it was Walmart. They're typically used for bathroom showers, but they also work great as holding all of my controllers and TV remotes attached to the wall. And I could then take it off when I'm finished without putting more holes in the wall. Because I'm already going to have a lot of holes to patch when I move out of this apartment. I also have hook on the left for my headphones to keep them out of the way. And then here's my little side table that I made. It's just a simple continuous hinge with some chain to keep it from going too far. I mount it down below and then a hook at the top to hold it up when I want it out of the way. And then here's the final setup. 9.2 channel surround sound. Almost a thousand watts of power, two subwoofers, all cables run behind the wall. And you can see I run them then down below out the door, my other subwoofer, and then my Xbox and all my other setup with the Atmos speakers sitting on top, firing up and then reflecting off the ceiling. It takes a little bit of setup because of how weird my speakers are set up compared to the other ones. But with the automatic adjustments, it sounds fan absolutely fantastic. Thanks for watching the video and subscribe for more.